and welcome to Fun with Fitzy. We're still in chapter 9. It's a big chapter. Chapter 11 is fairly big too. This is 9.5 part 1. We are finally doing depreciation, which is included in adjustments. Remember we adjusted for supplies, prepaid insurance, and prepaid rent, things like that. We had late bills, and now we have depreciation. There's going to be a couple of parts for this. What is depreciation? Well, let's talk about assets first. Assets that are used to produce revenue over several fiscal periods or years are known as fixed assets. We talked about this when we did our classified balance sheet. Fixed assets are also known as long-lived assets, capital equipment, and plant and equipment. These are different names for fixed assets, and we'll, we'll see that in grade 12. Except for land, all fixed assets will be used up in the course of time and activity. Now, when I say used up, it's not like used up like supplies. Um, the building gets old, the equipment gets old over time and needs to be replaced eventually. Fixed assets decrease in value. And so we call this depreciation when they decrease in value. Depreciation refers to an allowance made for the decrease in value of an asset over time. Now that's a pretty tricky one. What I like to say is depreciation is the spreading out, spreading out of the cost of the asset over time. So if it cost you $12,000 and you had it for 12 years, basically that should be $100 per year, right? So we're going to spread out the cost of the asset. It is not possible to calculate depreciation until the end of the asset's life. Only then can you say how many years it was used and determine its final worth. So basically what I'm saying here is you have to estimate a lot of things in order to calculate depreciation. Again, the matching principle, this was a gap we talked about. We're saying that uh, expenses must be in the period in which it helped you earn revenue. Well, if you have a automobile and it's helping you earn revenue every year, you have to expense that automobile over time. And that expense must, that part of the cost of the automobile must be included in each year's income statement that it was helping to produce revenue. So again, we need to estimate depreciation while the asset is still in use, because again, we don't know how long it's going to last. The two most common methods of calculating depreciation are the straight line method and the declining balance method. There's going to be a video for each of these. Before we get to those videos, so I want to talk about what the adjusting entry looks like and how do we do it. When adjusting for depreciation, you would expect to debit a depreciation expense. So let's say we had an automobile that we need to depreciate because it's a fixed asset, right? Well, you would expect to debit depreciation expense like we do with supplies. When we buy supplies, we debit supplies. Just like when we buy an automobile, we debit automobile. And then as we use up supplies, we use supplies expense. So in what we're gonna say, instead of calling it automobile expense, we're going to call it depreciation expense. And then as the supplies go down, we credit the actual account supplies. So you would expect, and it would make sense that we're going to credit the automobile. But we always want to see on our balance sheet how much that automobile cost us, so we can't credit the automobile. So in order to show the value of the asset, at cost always, we want to see the cost of this asset, let's say it was $10,000, we always want to see automobile saying $10,000. We cannot credit this. So what we're going to do is we're going to credit a different account called accumulated depreciation. And this is where we're going to just keep track of all of the depreciation over the years. So if we expense it for $100 this year, our accumulated depreciation will be $100. If we expense it for $100 the next year, now our accumulated depreciation is accumulating now we have $200. So this just keeps track of all of the, the depreciation we have. Accumulated depreciation, as we just talked about, we call it a valuation account or a contra account. We know um, 
about contra accounts already because we've talked about HST recoverable being a contra liability. Well, accumulated depreciation is going to be a contra asset, which means it has a credit balance because assets have debit balances and contra accounts have the opposite. So contra asset would have the opposite of a normal asset. Normal assets have debit. So opposite of debit is credit. Accumulated depreciation is also known as a valuation account because it helps us, um, together with the asset account, show the true net value. And we call this net book value. You're going to see NBV, net book value. So, for example, if the car costs $10,000 on your balance sheet, it's going to say auto, $10,000 always. And right below it, you're going to have your accumulated depreciation, sorry, and let's say we accumulated $200. Well, we're going to subtract that, and now we're going to have $9,800. So the net book value of our car, this is the value of our car on paper, not the market value. Don't get confused with market value and book value because they're different. Market value is what you could sell a car for, which sometimes is different. Net book value is the cost of your asset minus the accumulated depreciation. Net book value again is cost minus accumulated depreciation. So again, I just kind of tried to show you what that looks like a little bit on the balance sheet by scribbling in there, but let's look at it. Depreciation expense is an expense account, therefore it goes on the income statement. Each depreciation expense item is shown separately. So when you depreciate your truck, there's going to be a depreciation expense truck. When you depreciate your building, it's going to be depreciation expense building. When you depreciate your equipment, it's going to be depreciation expense equipment. And on the balance sheet, accumulated depreciation is deducted from its respective fixed asset account. So for example, here we have truck. I know that this truck costs $78,000, or we have $78,000 worth of trucks in our account. It'll always be that until we get rid of it. And we've accumulated $11,700 worth of depreciation expense over time. So when you subtract the two and put the answer right beside it on the balance sheet, I know that the value of my truck is actually $66,000. Net book value, remember cost minus accumulated depreciation. So by now you should be able to explain what depreciation is, why is it necessary, and be able to prepare the journal entry. The journal entry is always going to be depreciation expense as your debit and an accumulated depreciation as your credit. Hope that was helpful. Don't get too intimidated by this topic and we will do some examples in the next video.